All right. Oxfit Podcast, episode 27. And we've got a new guest. Who's here? All right. I'm Julia. Um, I've been coming to Oxfit for almost a year. I started last April, so I'm coming up on my one year. Um, I'm a physical therapist. I'm from here, essentially. Born in Connecticut, moved here when I was five, so I'm from here. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that's me. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you guys have probably seen Julia. I know you've seen her here at Grant Park. She's been... Uh, an evening regular, and then recently in the intern program, and the folks over at EAV have probably just started to see you kind of randomly throughout the day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you started over here at Grant Park about a year ago with um, your partner, Michaela. Yes. And yep. funnily enough, when Julia, the first day she came in, I had an appointment on the books with, it was under your name. It was under my name. So I had an appointment with Julia, and... I think you said that your partner was going to come with you. Yeah. And Michaela opened the door and was like super friendly, like, hey, how's it going? We have an appointment, blah, blah, blah. So immediately I was like, this is Julia. That's Julia. So for like the first month, I thought you were Michaela and she was Julia. Yeah. And then one day I um, was playing the name game and someone said that you you were Julia. And I was like, uh-uh, burpees for everybody. <laughs> yeah. That's not correct. And you were like, that's my, name's my Julia. name. <laughs> So I was super embarrassed. But now I can't even imagine you being a Michaela. You yeah. definitely look like a Julia. I'm more of a Julia. <laughs> yeah. I usually do the signing up, the background stuff. Yeah. Michaela takes over. So. Okay. But you got it straight. Yeah. It only I think took you like a month. It was funny. But that was like the first like hint at your personality. Because I think you and I are very similar. Yeah. Because in my relationship, I'm the same way. I'm always the one like sending the emails and doing the back end stuff. And then when it yeah. comes time to like... Execute. smile and execute I'm like go yeah, you go <laughs> I don't want to deal with this <laughs> yeah go be friendly yeah not that we're not friendly but no. it's yeah I just don't want to be sometimes right I know <laughs> it's like I want to go home early yeah I don't want to talk all night <laughs> no I get that not at all but yeah you guys have been crushing it ever since yeah I think awesome. you were a little more gung-ho about it than Michaela was at first but I think now she's like just as much yeah in it definitely yeah I mean we came across Oxfit we were we parked outside Grant Park. Mm-hmm. We were going to get brunch and mimosas mm-hmm. and heard you guys in here. And I was like, all right, we're going tomorrow. We're going to check it out. And she was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. That's not my thing. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I signed us up. <laughs> so we got to go. And she's, yeah, she's in. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny because that's like the fact that you followed through and you're still here is so opposite because because of where we're located, I feel like we do get a pretty frequent like like looky Lou just wants to come in and yeah. like see what's up like, yeah we were just eating across the street we wanted to check you guys out and I'm like yeah yeah book an appointment right. and then they never do right but you guys actually came in and tried it which yeah. is great yeah I mean we were hooked from like the first week mm-hmm. when we came in for our first like no sweat mm-hmm. you were like all right well we got classes this evening yeah and that's when I was like oh god <laughs> like this yeah we, we got to either do this or not yeah I mean you're here to work out or you're not yeah so. it's like okay we signed okay let's do it yeah um but yeah we've been hooked that's I awesome. love it here I feel like I've been here for more than a year I feel like I've yeah. known you guys for more than a year mm-hmm. um so yeah no we're I, obsessed we love it yeah That's awesome. I feel like we're, I know Aunt and I have talked about like our paths are very similar in like kind of the cadence that things are going for you is kind of exactly how it went for me when I joined. Um, It was like had a background that I already liked health and fitness, never really Mm -hmm. found something that I, I really like meshed with. And then joined. And then a year later, I was interning and then coaching. And then a year after that, I wasn't working at my job anymore. I was working here. So it's it's just funny to see, like, the way things unfold and, like, how empowering it can be to, like, find a community of people that believe in you Mm -hmm. and um, believe in you to do all sorts of different things. Because obviously, I quit to work here. Yeah. Not to you know, 
break the news yeah. but you wanted to wait are we allowed to say you're quitting yeah, your it's job fine, it's okay fine. Yeah. you're quitting your job to not work here but to do yeah. something amazing that like you want to do and yeah. I mean not that I'm saying it's because of Oxford, but I would like to think that you know we are a group of people that empowered you to like feel good about that for decision sure. yeah I think a big turning point for me was like so you're right health and fitness mm -hmm. like you were a nurse I'm a PT mm -hmm. um but I feel like when I started coming to Oxfit, I realized being around people who are just genuinely happy mm -hmm. and love doing what they do, um, it made me realize I'm not really happy with my job. You know, right. it's like I leave work every day pumped to come here mm -hmm. to work out, yes, but to be surrounded by people that are happy. Mm -hmm. um, and the longer I kept coming, I'm like, I got to make a change mm -hmm. or else five, 10 years down the road, I'm going to be stuck doing the same thing. Um, and that's not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had people in my corner supporting that and just kind of validating you can be happier doing something else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the plan is to step away from big corporate physical therapy and mm -hmm. do my own thing yeah so that's the plan that's amazing and I'm pumped about it okay yeah yeah well you've already made like it's not even a plan anymore you've already yeah. like started your own business yes yep so I'm setting up inside Oxfit EAV mm -hmm. I got my table in there mm -hmm. um and I'm gonna start working with people that's awesome yeah yeah it's an awesome to I know everyone at Grant Park mm -hmm. starting to get to know people at EAV um, and just having conversations with people, like everyone gets hurt or has something happen at one point or another. Mm -hmm. Um, so just being able to talk to them of, well, you don't have to stop doing this. You don't have yeah. to stop doing what you so thoroughly enjoy doing. Right. Um, so let's talk about what that looks like. You mm -hmm. know, maybe you have to modify something for a short bit of time and, I'll help you do that, mm -hmm. but you definitely don't need to stop doing what you enjoy. Yeah. And that's a big mindset shift for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been cool to have those conversations already. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's been such a good, like, resource for me, and I've already, like, tried to steer pe people towards um, – you or even other like physical therapists that we've had or have in our community because it's like it is hard when you have an athlete come in that says hey I've got this thing going on and my doctor says I should to be safe I should stop coming to the gym mm -hmm. and it's like like you said like man like to see you I see you every day yeah. and I see how much you love this and like so are you saying from now on I'm never gonna see you again and you're never gonna work out like this again right. even though I know you love it so yeah finding solutions to those problems is is great and then you know I have people I mean I have the new client meetings mm -hmm. all the time every week yeah. and so often the story is you know one of the questions I ask part of my little script is you know what do you do for fitness now or what have you done before that you've enjoyed doing right um because I think it's important to figure out not what you've just done, but what you've actually liked. Mm -hmm. um, and people say, you know, oh, well, I used to, man, I used to run all the time or I used to go to this one CrossFit gym or I used to do a dance class, but I hurt myself. So I haven't worked out in five years. Right. And I'm like, oh, like, why? <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, people need to, I feel like, get m more in the headspace of figuring out how movement can help you rather mm -hmm. than hinder you and right now I feel like the narrative in a lot of um healthcare spaces is it's just easier to stop and mm -hmm. sit down and rest yeah when, I mean you know more than I do that can a lot of times be more harmful than it is helpful absolutely yeah I mean movement is the best thing that you can do for yourself and I find that that's that conversation of I hurt myself five years ago so all I do is walk. And like for some people, that's okay. Like if you want to just walk as your exercise for the rest of your life, 
okay? That's what Mm -hmm. you want to do. But most people don't want to do that, especially if they've been a part of a fitness community in the past. Um, So just having that conversation of, okay, I, I hear you that you got hurt and you probably did need to change a few things up. But if it's a goal of yours to get back to doing what you were enjoying, that's very possible. Um, So just having, I feel like a lot of people don't know that. And I feel like a lot of people, if they do go to the doctor and they say they got hurt doing X, Y, or Z fitness related, they're like, well, what did you think was going to happen? Mm-hmm. It's like not get hurt. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of people in healthcare are encouraging a less active lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that's very unfortunate. Yeah. Because we only have one life. If you enjoy mm-hmm. working out, go work out and find the right people to help encourage that safely. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of ways to go about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, yeah, it's just making it, because there's no system set up to, like, properly rehab an injury, if you don't tell someone to just go rest, it's just going to create this revolving door of, like, nonstop, like, relapses um, for people. And, I mean, if you do one thing long enough, you're going to have aches and pains and if you don't talk to someone about those aches and pains, it could lead to an injury. And that's, you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're running or even walking every day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about like common misconceptions um, Mm -hmm. of going to a physical therapist. And one of the more common misconceptions is I have to have this big injury in order to get help. Mm -hmm. Um, And I am big on using PT as like prehab. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm in the gym or outside of the gym and I notice aches or pains or even strength imbalances left side versus right side. Um, When you start to notice those things, that's a great point to get into PT before it becomes something more. Um, So I feel like looking at physical therapy more so as like a movement specialty Mm -hmm. versus stepping away from that mindset that physical therapy is just rehabbing after surgery Mm -hmm. or after a bigger injury um, can help kind of shift that perspective of what physical therapy can be. Right. Um, Yeah. I mean, any kind of movement dysfunction we can help with yeah and that's a great time to get in before before you really get to that point of what do I do about this Mm -hmm. um so as soon as you start to notice things just have that conversation you know what what can this look like what can I do is huge yeah yeah and it's so necessary because it's you you don't want to get to the point where it becomes a bigger injury and it does take a more intense like rest and rehabilitation process Mm -hmm. but I mean, and I'm guilty of this too. Like, even as a nurse, I only worked with physical therapists in the hospital, which mm-hmm. obviously those are very acute, like, patients with pretty complex injuries. Um, and then any other physical therapy was what we prescribed patients to do when they left the hospital. So once right. again, they're still dealing with freaking, like, back surgery mm-hmm. or, like, something huge. And then after that, you go there for I don't know how long. How long is normal? Like six weeks? Not even? Yeah. Yeah, like six weeks with a PT after a major surgery. Yeah. And then you're just like, those are the people that then five years later come talk to me (laughs) and they're like, well, I had surgery five years ago and I saw a PT for six weeks and then it still hurt too bad to work out. So I haven't worked out since then. Right. And it's like, oh no. Yeah. And that's the problem with like bigger... PT businesses or hospital corporations, things like that. Yes, you're being prescribed physical therapy, but it is coming either from a doctor's prescription or Mm -hmm. an insurance prescription. Mm -hmm. So it's, I can tell you right now, low back pain two to three times a week for four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's it. And 
that takes so much of the custom plan out of things. So whether your back hurts because you just had surgery or your back hurts because you pulled a muscle two to three times a week for four weeks. And within those two to three times that you're going, I can tell you what that physical therapist is going to prescribe. Mm -hmm. And man, it's like a PT plan of care should be so customized that when a client comes into your office, they don't know what you're going to tell them. Mm -hmm. And it's not basic exercises. It's really sitting down, having the conversation, looking at the whole body, and then having a conversation between the two of you of how are we going to get you back to 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, And bigger PT businesses really rob you of that individualized care. Yeah. Or you were saying like, And, like, it even, like, these physical therapists have, like, all of these, like, roadblocks put in their way. Like, we were talking about if I came to you and you were my physical therapist and you weren't, you know, working for yourself or whatever. And I said, you know, my back is really bothering me. But in one of our sessions, you realized it's not my back. It's actually my right knee. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to treat me. My insurance wouldn't pay for it. because. My, my like script for PT wasn't for a knee, it was for my back. It was for your back. So when you go under insurance, you're exactly right. So if after our first visit, we're doing our whole movement screen and I see that the issue's coming from your knee, I would have to stop my care. You would have to go back to your doctor, get another script for your knee, have it then sent to insurance. Insurance company would have to approve it. And then it gets sent back to me. And then we can work on your knee. Mm -hmm. And so it's working for myself is really just to benefit my clients, my athletes, my patients. Taking out that middleman and getting you the care that you need in a a specific way. And it's not going to be two to three times a week. for. It's going to be whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Right? So... It takes that, basically, I'm not going to waste your time, Yeah. right? It's like, let's deal with what you're here to deal with so that you can move on, Mm -hmm. so that you can progress. And I'm not just keeping you here because you have to be here for four weeks. Yeah. Um, So it's really like whatever you need, that's what I'm going to provide. And there's no middleman, which is great. Yeah. And it's... Yeah, and just thinking about it, like you said, as a prehab or a way to just take care of yourself Mm -hmm. Um, and not, you know, so much as a person you have to go see after, like, a major accident. Right. You know, and and that's kind of a mindset, like, shift that I've had. And, like, it makes you ask yourself, like, how much do you care Mm -hmm. about your body? Um, You know, the same thing with paying for a $200 membership versus a $10 a month membership. Right. You it's know, what you're getting. It's what you're getting and, and the, the quality that you value and what you want to put into yourself. Like, are you going to pay for Ox 100 because you know it's going to change your life? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to pay to go to a private physical therapist because you want to move, have quality movement for the rest of your life and you want to have longevity or yeah are you okay with just being sedentary and just kind of living your life like most Americans do which is not able to climb a flight of stairs yeah yeah it's like you want to be better than that you know you're Mm -hmm. better than that and that's the thing it's like asking people to pay out of pocket yeah I know I know what that comes with Mm -hmm. it's a bold thing to ask but I know that in the long run it's probably going to be cheaper and you're going to get way more out of it Mm -hmm. and so that initial especially for people who don't know me Mm -hmm. it's like that initial you got to trust me um that's like a step that you have to take but then working together 
one-on-one, my entire focus for an entire hour is going to be on you. I don't have three other patients that I'm going around to giving you your exercises. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's different than anything you're going to experience mm-hmm. at any other in-network PT clinic that you would go to. Yeah. So it's like I know that out-of-network PTs are worth it because they're delivering something that other people just can't. Mm -hmm. They don't have the time or the resources to be able to provide individual care, Mm -hmm. quality care. Yeah. Um, So did your – so I don't really know a lot about, like, PT schooling. Okay. Um, And I'm not talking about, like – qualifications like obviously I know like if you're a physical therapist you know your stuff but like in school did they assume that all of their graduates do you, wait, do you have a doctorate yes so you went to DPT school so yes. what is that like six years so it's it's four years of undergrad okay three years of grad school okay okay yeah so you have a doctorate which is insane a physical therapy did they think that all of their graduates were they like just funneling you into like hospitals and like really clinical settings or were there conversations of like how do you start your own PT clinic yeah we half of a summer semester Mm -hmm. so what two weeks Mm -hmm. (laughs) we talked about um what it would look like to start your own clinic okay one of my professors had her own clinic she had opened I think four clinics in Vermont, Mm -hmm. which is where I went to school. Um, So she was the only one that really had experience with it. Everything else was focused on typical outpatient settings. Mm -hmm. So we learned a lot about insurance and we learned a lot about you're going to have two to four patients at one time within a 45 to 60 minute period So you need to figure out how to manage that time as best as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had three 12-week-long clinicals, and I got to experience that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. You know, like how how can you even justify that you're providing physical therapy when all they're doing is laying on a table with like a two-pound weight? Yeah. And then I have two other people over here that I'm running back and forth to. Um, So I had had a lot of conversations with my one professor who opened her own thing. And she actually worked with me on creating like business plans and things like that. Um, And she was very open privately of how typical outpatient places just they're not going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why she branched off yeah. and did her own thing. Yeah, it's just, oh, man. It's so crazy to feel, like, trapped in a system where you know you're not helping anyone. Yeah. And I felt the same way as when I was nursing. It mm-hmm. was like, I did this because I care about people and I want to help people and I want to be around people and I like having those hard conversations about like how to make you better and how to make you healthy but I just found that I wasn't doing that yeah I was pumping them full of drugs I was giving them a burger and fries every afternoon from the (laughs) hospital cafeteria right and like because those that's the resources you had right that's all that was available and it's like I went home at night and I was like did I help anyone today? Because right. I don't feel like I did. I feel like everyone was just in pain and they're just prolonging the inevitable, which yeah. was them passing away, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we are just so, we're just in a system that is setting it setting us up for failure. Yeah. And Aunt and Caitlin had a really good conversation about this on a previous podcast. If you haven't listened to it, you should. But it's true and it's not dramatic to say that we're being kept sick Mm -hmm. and overweight and prone to disease and prone to injury and all of these things because it is such an investment and you have to go out of your way to 
be healthy and have longevity, which is so sad. Right. Um, <clears throat> and of course, there are ways to do it that aren't such a financial burden or aren't such like, you know, off the beaten path. But for the most part, it is. You have to go against what everyone else is doing, what everyone is telling you to do in order yeah. to have a different outcome. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where like having a community and having resources is mm -hmm. so huge. Like you want to get your nu nutrition right, talk to Caitlin. You mm -hmm. want to, you know, work on your strength in the gym, talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where, I don't know, Oxford does so many things right. And you guys have endless resources here of setting people up for success. And it's a huge stepping stone into a lifelong journey mm -hmm. of health. Mm -hmm. And that's rare. You know, you go to any other gym, you're, you're just getting equipment. Yeah. But here you're getting like a whole community of yeah. people who know how to get you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and that's what I want people to realize is like, we do have so many resources here and we want to give it to as many people as possible. Right. But if you tell me you want something or you want to do something, I'm going to take you seriously and I'm going to be like, here's Julia's phone number. Here's her email. She has this business. You need to book an appointment because she can help you fix this. Right. And if you don't want to do it, that's on you. But like it's there. Yeah. Or if you're a new mom, Lauren is here. She's taking clients. In eight weeks, she can get you to where you want to be. You just have to buy in and believe in yourself. And, right. I mean, it's the same for me. It's the same for Caitlin and Aunt with their nutrition program. Um, but yeah, I think it's we're creating such a cool space um, that really has something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um and just so many members that are like a testament to that. We yeah. have so many people that have benefited from the resources we have here in the yeah, gym. Definitely. Yeah, it's so cool to see. I mean, people going through any of the programs here, just watching them transform. Mm -hmm. And it's not even just while they're doing the program. It's like you learn things that you then carry on forever. Um, yeah, it's been it's been cool. I mean, I've only been here for a year and I'm like, I've watched people's lives transform. And how yeah. cool is that? Yeah. And it's just like the common theme or the line you can draw is just all of those people took charge of their health mm -hmm. and they started to have ownership and responsibility over their body. Right. They didn't just let things happen to them. They decided what happened. Yeah. They said, I'm going to eat like this for three months. I'm going to see Julia and I'm going to keep showing up to the gym every day because I don't want to live with this injury. So, right. yeah, you have to tell yourself what you want and you have to make it happen. You can't just be someone that just rolls with the punches and wherever you end up, you end up. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to be a good place. Right. <laughs> it is. It's like initially putting in the hard work, mm -hmm. but then proving to yourself that you can do it. And then you, you won't go back because you won't want to go back. Mm -hmm. It's like once you start to see progress, whether that's with – PT, nutrition, strength, once you start down that path, you've now shown yourself mm -hmm. what it can do. And if you do go back, that's on you at that point, yeah. right? But most people don't because they see how much better their life can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, that's exactly what happened to me. I was given the tools I needed and I f was empowered to basically just be healthy. Yeah. I was unhealthy. I was given tools. I became healthy. And then that season of my life gave me the confidence to quit my job, to yeah. do something I love every day, to take on new challenges, to not be scared of whatever might yeah. be. Um, yeah, it's cool. I had someone this morning, I had a, a member, um, we're doing another round of Ox 100 for March. Okay. Um, it's going to start on Monday, the 18th. Okay. <clears throat> and normally we, uh, I think originally we were going to wait and start another one in April. But we were like, no, we're just going to no. do it now. Like yeah. the momentum is there. Like let's just keep getting people to do this program. Um, but I had someone, I was like, hey, 
starting Monday, you said you wanted to do it. And he's like, you know what? I am. I heard someone the other day said it changed their life. And I have a new rule for this year. If anyone tells me something changed their life, I'm going to do it. (laughs) Okay. I love that. (laughs) So I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, It's like, just do it. That's so cool. Yeah. Because you don't want to stay where you're at, right? You want to keep getting better. So I'm glad you're doing it in March. You got to keep it going. Yeah. It'll be good. That's yeah. Caitlin and Aunt are crushing it. So yeah. and the the pictures I'm seeing from folks is before and after is it's nuts. Wild. But yeah, and we've got a lot of people in the gym that I think could benefit from seeing you or talking to you. And I think the coaching staff can really benefit because I am very quick to like shut down any negative talk when it comes to injuries mm-hmm. or like last night I had someone being like my shoulders bothering you I had a ton of pull-ups and like hanging from the rig and I was like yeah okay show me what position you're in when it hurts and I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. and I was like all right Go we're not Juliet. gonna be in that position today but we can do some bicep curls <laughs> yeah, and I'm right. like we're still gonna get a great workout we're just not gonna you know mess with your shoulder yeah um and still give people the feeling and the confidence that like they came in and they worked really hard but now to be able to say and tomorrow I need you to go talk to right. Julia because you yeah. need to get your shoulder looked at so it doesn't like get worse. Yeah. Um, and I think that is like the coaching staff is so good at knowing modifications. Mm-hmm. So keep doing that. And until you no longer have to modify, come see me. Mm-hmm. And then once we get that figured out, go back and ditch the modifications. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I love that. It's like because people know it's like this feels weird Mm -hmm. like I don't know what it is but it feels off yeah and so yeah especially if you're just starting your fitness journey and um maybe you just need help navigating like is this pain or is this soreness right like have I just not worked out for five years and my body feels it or am I moving incorrectly and I'm actually like hurting myself every time I come here um so yeah is that something you would be open to like Absolutely. Having a session and just watching someone move and be like, everything looks good. I think you're just sore. You're just sore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Because I know that can be hard for people, like, especially after, like, a heavy deadlift day. Like, yeah. everyone's lower back gets sore yeah, after sore that to tight. some extent. So it's like, did you hurt your back or is your back just sore because you did a lot of pulling from the ground? Right. Yeah. So even like any first visit with me is going to look a lot like a movement screen. It's going to look like you're doing a bunch of random movements, Mm -hmm. exercises, while I'm watching you to see if there's any kind of deficit. Um, And yeah, sometimes it might just be your sore. And then I can teach you mobility techniques to take that soreness from five days to two days, something like that. Um, So, yeah, you don't have to be injured or really hurting. If anything feels off, just come see me. Come talk Mm -hmm. to me. We can just have a conversation um, and see if we are a good fit, you know. So send anyone and everyone. And then then we'll have the conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm really happy for you. Thank you. I'm excited to see all the cool stuff you do yeah I'm and excited. all the ways you help people and I don't know if people know um but you also know what you're talking about because you have a herniated disc right now <laughs> yeah I do Julia came in the office or the pod room today and she was like so I just got an epidural <laughs> yeah. it hurt really bad yeah. <laughs> it hurt um but yeah and it is like I my doctor was like you got to go to PT so I was like <laughs> you know what I am gonna go one yeah. time and I'm gonna see what this is and I went in and I knew what what was going to happen and she did she had three other patients I told her I was a PT and so she was like do you know what to do and I was like yeah and I told her what I would do and she was like that's exactly what I was going to do so um I'm rehabbing myself Mm -hmm. and I'm getting better Mm -hmm. but yeah that's everyone gets hurt yeah yeah but I'm rehabbing myself. I feel better. My epidural's kicking in. <laughs> so, yeah. And you've still been moving and, like, modifying workouts. Yeah, and yeah. That's... Taking it easy when you need to, but. Yeah. The first thing when I went to the doctor, he was like, were you doing CrossFit? 
I was like, no, actually, I wasn't. I do Oxfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it was, he just assumed it was, I was working out, I was doing something stupid, I was lifting too heavy. Mm-hmm. I was lifting a 35 pound dumbbell. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, things just happen. Things like, happen. Yeah. No one would come in like with that energy if you were like, oh, my ankle. They're like, were you running? <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, even though I think, Am I correct in saying that running has, like, the number one number yeah. of, like, injuries for athletes? But I digress. That's just <laughs> yeah. my issue with people thinking weightlifting is dangerous. Definitely, yeah. And it's, you know, I saw a video recently that was so funny. It was, like, how people think I get hurt mm-hmm. working out, and it's, like, snatching and push press. Yeah. And then it was, like, how I actually get hurt, and it's tripping over a plate yeah. or something <laughs> stupid like right. that. You know, so... It's when you least expect it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so everyone has something going on. Everyone can benefit from PT. Um, I'm benefiting from PT right now, and it's humbling. Mm-hmm. But it also goes to show that it works, right? Yeah. I couldn't lift my foot a week ago. It's coming back. <laughs> so we're making progress. Yeah. Yeah, you were real casual about that. That yeah. would have freaked me out. Yeah, I finished the workout. I was, like, pinching the <laughs> shit out of your yeah. leg, and you're like, I don't feel it. I don't feel that at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so, gosh. Yeah, it's all good, though. Oh, yeah. It's all good. All right. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks for joining me on the pod. I'm sure we'll revisit and see how things are going. Yeah. If any Oxfit members are interested, um, you can reach out to Julia. Yeah. There will be some clips of this on the gram. I'll put her contact info, and it will be in the I don't even know what you call it the comment info section under this video (laughs) yeah the comment I'm such a bad content creator (laughs) it'll be in the caption it'll be in the caption (laughs) also you guys see her in the gym all the time so yeah come up to me message me if for some reason you can't get in touch with me reach out to Savannah Mm -hmm. or Caitlin they'll get you in contact with me oh yeah all right all right thank you let's go